Hey, it's been a while, but welcome to our second experiment video. Today, we're gonna to be teaching and experimenting with one of my favorite tools, H2Blue. When H2Blue came out, it changed the hydrogen industry as we know it. Now, you don't have to guess if your water has hydrogen gas in it. You can actually know. H2Blue is a reagent to test for dissolved hydrogen gas in water. It is really easy to use, but there are many ways to do it wrong. And we'll go over all of that and more. So let's get it started. I would like to take a second to thank our sponsors. Thank you. This video would not be possible without their support. But there is so much more we would like to do with this channel. If you would like to support our mission, you can go to patreon.com slash h2minutes and become a patron. First things first, what is H2Blue? H2Blue is a reagent to measure the concentration of dissolved hydrogen gas in water. The measurement is in milligrams per liter, which is equivalent to ppm. Milligrams per liter is the more preferred unit of measurement. Click the card to watch a previous video of ours explaining why. Shoot Blue is made with a specific formulation of methylene blue and platinum nanoparticles. If there is any detectable concentration of dissolved hydrogen gas within the water, the methylene blue will react with the hydrogen gas. It will turn methylene blue into leucomethylene blue, which is clear in color. Each drop of H2 blue that clears is equivalent to 0.1 milligrams per liter or ppm. This means you can continue to add drops of H2 blue until you hit the titration endpoint in which the water will remain a pale blue color. By counting the drops that turn clear, you can calculate the dissolved hydrogen concentration. Pretty cool, right? H2 Blue is made in the US and can be shipped all around the world. The link to purchase and learn more about H2 Blue is in the description. So let's get to the testing. Here I have some H2 Blue and some hydrogen water. This is the graduated beaker that comes with H2 Blue. And it comes with a stirring straw and instructions. The hydrogen water that I'm using, I just made for one of my hydrogen water countertop devices. First, I will demonstrate the correct way to test with H2 Blue and the way I personally use it. Then we'll get into some incorrect ways and some mistakes you can make when using H2 Blue. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. One point five ppm. So let's walk through this. So there's really only three keys when testing with H2 Blue. Collect the sample add the drops, and examine the results. But each of these have a correct way and multiple incorrect ways to do them. And with each of these, there's one key focus. Don't lose the H2, or at least try to lose as little H2 as possible. So first, you need to collect the sample. Because this video is to demonstrate how to test with H2 Blue, my source water is irrelevant. I really just need hydrogen-rich water. But if you're testing a hydrogen water device, you need to take your sample straight from the system. So don't fill up a glass and then pour your sample from a glass. Hydrogen gas starts to escape from your sample as soon as you pour it. Every time you move the water or pour it into something, you are losing hydrogen and it will affect your reading. With many systems, especially flow-through units, you will need to run a little water to clear the lines to ensure you're testing fresh H2 water. I usually have a glass there to let water flow in and take my sample midstream. If you have a batch system or pitcher or portable system that runs in cycles, you will need to take your sample once that cycle is complete. When you take your sample, you need to tilt your beaker and let the water hit the edge of the beaker first. Just like this. It 
If your beaker is upright, it will splash at the bottom, allowing for more hydrogen to escape. You'll need to fill the beaker to the six milliliter line, which is right here. What is vital to know is that the bottom of the meniscus needs to be at the top of the six milliliter line. So it should look like this before you start testing. It's extremely important for this to be as correct as possible for the measurement to be accurate. You cannot just expect to fill this thing up halfway or all the way to the top and expect these readings to be accurate. You have to use this tool in the way it's designed to be used. Also, when getting your six milliliters, you do not want to do a lot of adjusting like pouring out from the beaker if you have too much. Try to get your accurate six milliliters as quick as you can. Again, too much agitation or time before you start testing will result in H2 escaping and lower readings. Now it's time to add the drops. As I said before, as soon as you get your sample, H2 starts to escape the water. So make sure you have all your supplies ready before you test so it can go as quick as possible. Be gentle. Don't shake it around or set it down hard on the table. When adding your drops, you need to have your bottle at a 90 degree angle. Not tilted to the side, but straight up and down. I like to put it in the beaker a bit so I can be sure it doesn't splatter on the sides of the beaker. Speaking of which, I try to avoid splattering or dripping H2 blue down the side of the beaker. This can result in incorrect readings as each drop is calibrated to a specific size so that the reading can be accurate. Remember, each drop is equivalent to 0.1 milligrams per liter or 0.1 ppm. So it's vital that you count each drop that you add. Because one drop is equal to 0.1 ppm, if the water you are measuring is lower than 0.1 ppm, then H2 blue will not be able to detect it. When adding the drops, make sure that you're applying a gentle and consistent finger pressure. If you squeeze the bottle too hard, you can enlarge the droplets, resulting in a lower or inaccurate reading. Now, there are a couple ways you can add the drops. One way is to add one drop at a time and see if it clears. You can use the stir provided with H2 blue, or you can give it a little swirl. The swirl is what I prefer, but I have a lot of practice under my belt. There is a fine line between swirling and shaking. Remember that. Also with stirring, it can take a little longer and you can stir out a lot of H2. Let me demonstrate the correct way to stir H2 blue. And the incorrect way to stir. This is the correct way to do the swirl. And the incorrect way. What's our focus again? Don't lose the H2. By the way, don't worry about making sure every speck of blue clears. If it clears easily, then it's safe to go ahead and add more drops. Trying to get every single speck of blue in the water will only give more time and agitation for H2 to escape. Another method of adding drops is the loaded drop method. This is my favorite method and is really beneficial when working with higher concentrations of H2. How this works is you will put in multiple drops at a time before you let it clear. This is the way I tested the water at the beginning of the video. The method you use will heavily depend on the technology you're testing. If you are testing an H2 product that tests on the lower side of H2, let's say 0.5 milligrams per liter, then you would probably want to use the one drop at a time method. If your product claims to produce three milligrams per liter or 30 drops, I would use the loaded drop method and do 10 drops at a time. If you have never tested your product before, start with what is claimed to achieve, then go from there. Let me demonstrate. This is from a lower concentration H2 water.
0.8 ppm. And this water is of a higher concentration. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. 71, 72. 73. 73 drops at a 7.3 milligrams per liter. If I'm unsure how the product will perform, I will always start with five drops. If it does not clear, I will start over and do it one at a time. Next is to examine the results. The final step of testing for dissolved H2 is to figure out where to go next after you've added your drops. This means deciding if you need to add more or if you have reached a titration endpoint. You should continue to add drops until the water remains a pale blue. Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven, eight, so as you can see, it's remaining a pale blue, so we reached we have reached the titration endpoint. And that is 0 0.8 milligrams per liter. After you completed the test, you can do a calculation for how many milligrams of H2 you have in your water, given the volume. I won't explain what all of that means right now, but I did explain it in another video. I will also link a calculator that we made that can help you with this calculation. It will be linked in the description. It is helpful to do this test multiple times to get an average and it will demonstrate the range in which your product performs. The reality is, is there are many ways to do a titration incorrectly. So you may need to do a few tests and average out the readings. Testing with H2 Blue is somewhat of an art form and can be perfected over time. As you get better at doing the measurements the same every time, your readings will become more consistent. Remember, when H2 gas is dissolved into water, it is fragile and it escapes rapidly. Seemingly small differences in any of the variables that we have discussed can result in large differences in your reading. So my advice is if the product that you are testing doesn't test how you expect, I will question the testing technique first. That being said, there are plenty of products on the market that do not test at the levels in which they are being claimed. Which leads me to another important aspect of H2 Blue and why I suggest that every single person that has a hydrogen water product needs to get some. It is great to have in order to confirm that the product that you are using is consistently producing dissolved H2 in your water. It is suggested by the manufacturer and myself as well that you test the product at least once per month to ensure that it's still producing H2. Some H2 products out there may produce good dissolved H2 levels when they are new, but that level may go down or go away completely over time. It is vital to make sure your product is still producing dissolved hydrogen. And this leads to the final point of this video. Why is my device not producing any detectable levels of dissolved hydrogen gas in my water? 
Let me tell you, I've been there and it's not fun. First things first, you need to go through all the testing techniques just to make sure it's not because of your testing. Here are some reasons of why your product might not be showing any detectable levels of H2. Some machines may have accumulated lime scale buildup on the electrodes and plumbing. This leads to H2 not being able to dissolve properly in the water. Some machines require source water minerals for the water to be electrically conductive to produce hydrogen gas. So if your source water does not have adequate levels of minerals, you may not be able to detect any measurable levels of H2. Also, some products use magnesium to produce dissolved hydrogen gas and water. Some of these products will produce adequate H2 water to begin with. That will decrease with time until eventually they will not produce any detectable levels of H2. This is of course dependent upon the product and there is a good explanation of why it happened. Some prepackaged H2 water is packaged in a way that the H2 can escape usually through the opening. So even if it starts out as hydrogen rich water, by the time you get it, most of the hydrogen is gone. It's important to know just because you see visible hydrogen gas bubbles or cloudy water, does not mean it will have high levels of dissolved hydrogen gas. If you are unsure about the hydrogen water product you are using and have questions, go ahead and ask me in the comments and I will answer. There is much to say about this topic and it is way too much to address in this format. So again, if your product is not producing any detectable levels of H2, or you have trouble testing with H2 Blue, comment on this video and I'll help you out. I should know H2 Blue can stain surfaces, skin, and clothing. So be careful and maybe not wear your favorite shirt when you're using it. I hope this video was helpful to you and taught you something new about testing with H2 Blue. Thanks again to our sponsors. Go to patreon.com slash minutes and check out all the perks you can gain by becoming a patron or a sponsor. Stay tuned for a bonus video of more H2 Blue experiments. And remember, don't lose the H2. And that was your test of H2 Blue in two minutes.